Hi everybody and welcome back to the dark fashion bunker. Why is it so dark? Because we'll be reviewing something in a dark package. Encre Noir by Lalique. Now, I'm going to open it, we're going to do first impressions, we're going to do the dry down. I have tried it already, but let's see how about uh, how this particular uh, batch works. Um, listen, a lot of you have been asking me in the past years to review it, in particular when I was posting a lot of my Inside Sycamore videos. By the way, check those out. It's um, a short YouTube series that I created that is still ongoing, dedicated to one of my favorite um, newer Chanel fragrances. Well, it doesn't exist anymore because I love the Eau de Toilette. Sycamore, uh, which you can see here in the Eau de Toilette form. Oh my gosh, so little space, so big perfumes. Um... So then a lot of you were telling me, actually, some of you even sent me samples of it, thank you very much, of Ancre Noir, but now is the time to really kind of dive into this bottle. I've decided to dive into this bottle because I'm still not running low on my Eau de Toilette Sycamore, which is, again, the Eau de Toilette version, been compared a lot to Ancre Noir by a lot of you. I'm not running low on it, but if I ever do, I'm going to need a substitute because I am not a fan of the Eau de Parfum of Inside Sycamore, uh, Inside Sycamore. <laughs> great, of Sycamore. Uh, I do not like the Eau de Parfum. It just does not do that fragrance justice. Jacques Poge did a great job with the Eau de Toilette. Olivier did a terrible job with the Eau de Parfum. I just, I know for a lot of people who have never smelled the Eau de Toilette and just discovered the Les Exclusives range for the first time now in these past years and discovered Sycamore, it's kind of become like of a trend fragrance. And the more something becomes a trend, uh, the less, I, I'm just so, anyway, can be bothered, as they say. Um, but, uh, so yeah. I'm going to open it, this wooden looking box. Strangely enough, this has become some sort of uh, a cheap perfume in terms of uh, you can find it really very, very, very cheap, uh, almost like 60, 70 percent off. I, I don't know why. I guess it. I guess it's not popular anymore. So what I have noticed and I had it in hand, I had three different uh, batches in hand to choose from. And I, I went for the one that is labeled Lalique Beauty Services. The other version I had did not say Lalique anymore, but some other company did say Lalique mm, Parfums SA Zurich blah 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 on top. But then here they changed the name from Lalique to something else. So either some company bought them. I don't have to do some research on that, but uh, I think I went for the slightly older version with the older address, just hoping to come closer to whatever was if this one was ever reformulated, whatever was the original formulation of it. However, um, I didn't really bother too much to check the date. Oh gosh, this reflects light so much. But to check the date of production of this one according to the batch. But the batch is, I can tell you that, 103272F18 or 10. I can check that better probably on the bottle once I open it. Okay, enough blabber. Let's get to the juice inside of the package but it's always good to have a premise by the way as i'm unboxing this i would love to thank all my patrons on patreon for uh, helping out and uh, pledging you guys have access to exclusive content and also content that comes to patreon before it hits youtube so that's special over there but also we get to talk about a lot of other topics as well so thank you so much for that. Also, guys, be sure to write to askdacob at gmail.com because, well, first check out the first pilot episode I shot. You get to call in live and we get to talk and record that and then that ends up in an episode. Are we having an episode here right now where I can't unbox? Ah, here it goes. <sighs> Ever since the Coromandel epic fail unboxing. I'm like so stressed out when I unbox perfumes on camera live like this because you never know. Okay. There it is. So anyway, check out uh, Ask Jacob. First episode is on my channel and write me if you have any questions or any topics you wish to talk about with me to askdacob at gmail.com. Okay. So this is the package. So it is nested, enshrined inside of this box. Everything is so black. And very, very medieval. Nice concept. Fake wood. Fake wood texture. Okay, box gone. Let's ruffle this up a little. And, um... 
minimalism, 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 minimalism. Lalique is usually, you can go check out some classic old bottles of Lalique from the past. Uh, they're not minimal at all. They're the opposite of that. But this is a, what was this exactly, 2006 release? Uh, Lalique Eau de Toilette. Here you can see the batch number perfectly. 10327-2F18. The sticker has a wooden texture print on it. Not really texture, just the, the print. So that's... Now, whether or not the stopper is wood or plastic, let's see. I think it's plastic. Oh, don't tell me it's not a splash. I mean, don't tell me it's not a spray, because otherwise... Oh my god, you guys, this could be... Really? No, no, it says natural spray. Okay, so I have to... Oh my god, what's wrong with perfumes nowadays? You can't even open them anymore. I can't, <laughs> I can't get this off. I'm sense... Oh, okay, no, it's off, it's off. We're not having another Coromandel situation here. Um... Okay, let me inspect this up close. Give me a second off camera. This is wood. The inside has a plastic bit and then all surrounding it, oops, surrounding it is a wooden brick. So for all you fans of um, Minecraft, God, it took me a while to remember, Jesus Christ, what's wrong with my brain today? Uh, you can collect these little fellas and uh, build yourself a whole Minecraft world, a Lalikian Minecraft world. Okay, so this is a fingerprint magnet, the black glass. Let's spray Ancre Noir and see what it does for me. Three spritzes, that'll do. Opening notes are completely sycamore-ish. But this is due to the fact that, well, I mean, we got really very, only a few notes listed in Ancre Noir, and that is in the top notes, we got the cypress, then we got the vetiver in the mid notes, and then the base notes are cashmere wood and musk. Released in 2006, so we cannot say really that Ancre Noir is trying to copy Sycamore, because it was released a Befel Sycamore. So, I mean, Sycamore was already in the making, in 2006, but it wasn't officially released. The nose behind it is Nathalie Lorson, or Nathalie Lorson. Um, as the name suggests, this is a Nordic person, and as the smell suggests even more, it is a very Nordic fragrance. Bottle is beautiful. Um, the wooden lid is also gorgeous. Everything works, very very, very smell in the opening notes. There's a warmth to it, but a coldness as well. Now, of course, we're going to get to the comparison with Sycamore because most of you compare to Sycamore. This is what I take to travel, my eau de toilette, whatever is left of it, uh, that I travel with and then have the bigger bottle for at home. Let's spray one. Well, actually, let me spray the bigger bottle. Although, let me just check... Ah, uh, let's go to the older batch, perhaps. Yeah, let's go to the 6201 batch, which is this one. This is the 0301. This one is younger. They repeat every 10 years, by the way, so don't be fooled by these numbers. Okay, so I'm going to spray it here, but off camera, because I don't want to get this wet. Just two sprays, because this one, this one literally bathes you. The, sprays much, the sprayer is much more opulent in giving than this one is. Ooh, okay, Sycamore. Mm. Mm -hmm. Ancre Noir is lighter than Sycamore. I do have an older batch of Sycamore de Toilette, which is more intense than the latest, the last formulations of it prior to its discontinuation somewhere around 2016-17. But, um, so the richer version of the de Toilette definitely has more ingredients than Ancre Noir and also has a bigger heft and depth. Also, um... Mm. There's more character. Well, let me just put it next to it so we know what we're talking about. Um, Sycamore has more character than uh, Ancre Noir. It, it just does. It, it's not that I'm biased in some ways because I love Chanel. Uh, I love Chanel for a reason. Not just because it's Chanel, but because the quality of their fragrance is just amazing. And Sycamore is... 
darker. It, it has more secrets, you know, from the north. Whispers from the north hiding within it. Way more secrets than Ancre Noir has. Ancre Noir is a simpler, cleaner, linear, more linear type of smell. So, you I mean, you get your cypress in the top. And cypress doesn't always evaporate quickly. If you balance the ingredients right, and if you do your job right, the cypress will stay around for a while, depending on, you know, what sort of cypress you're using, how synthetic is it, blah, blah, blah. Um, vetiver is in the mid notes. You know, with sycamore, we also have vetiver in the mid notes. We also have vetiver in the bottom notes and um, the base notes. Um, so... In particular, if you ever get a chance to try out the Eau de Toilette of Sycamore, you will notice that it has, and I've said this in my review, you could check out the review of Sycamore also on my YouTube channel, as well as the Inside Sycamore series, which, by the way, I forgot to mention before, the continuation of it is only on Patreon. That's exclusive to Patreon. Sycamore is wet in the Eau de Toilette form. It's quite dry, warm, almost like burnt woody in the Eau de Parfum, which is why I don't like it. Uh, in the Eau de Parfum concentration. The Eau de Toilette concentration stays wet. You have the feeling the vetiver has been literally dragged out of the soil and it's still wet and it still smells of soil and, and, and humidity. That's how delicious, uh, I mean, to my nose, delicious. To others, it could be gross, but to my nose, it's really delicious. That's why, how, that's why the Eau de Toilette of Sycamore is so delicious. And then it goes to a more powdery place a bit later on in the game. Ancre Noir, for now, is very light. I'm going to have to reapply, by the way. A little bit. Uh, we're using the Samsara lid. In there, I'm reapplying. Very, very Samsara lid to hold up the bottle of Ancre Noir. You see, they're all big friends. All of these perfume brands. Guerlain is helping out Lalique. Huh? Lalique and Chanel are talking. All is good in the world of perfumes today. Um, it's very, very light. Yeah, Sycamore immediately, like, attacks you and attaches itself to you, and you are captivated by its world completely. I've mentioned in my Coromandel Parfum review uh, that Coromandel really fits the world of Thra and the Dark Crystal, in particular Age of Resistance. Um, Sycamore would, too. Sycamore would be more based in, in, in the kind of the, the higher lands where the mountains are, uh, where the all Madra lives. That would be more of a fragrance. Man, also Coromandel. But Coromandel is more for the exotic, uh, oriental-looking parts of Thra. But nevertheless, both are very rich, very, very rich texture. They tell so many different stories. They carry this heavy baggage with them. Uh, and I'm a big fan of the Dark Crystal, so... Ancre Noir, Lalique, is kind of a lighter version of this, so its packaging and, and how it's all, how it all looks and what it inspires uh, with its aesthetic could also definitely be a part of the Dark Crystal, but it's as if it were a watered-down version of it. Let's say this is more the CGI aspect of the show, even though we know almost all, the sh all of the show was made with real puppets, so this is the real deal, real puppetry. And this is kind of puppetry with a bit of, there's a little bit of um, CGI in there as well. It's much, much lighter uh, than this. And less powdery. <clears throat> um, what seems to be a bit of an Oris Rudy flavor here is not there. There's also a bit of tobacco feeling here, not there. So there are... Um, these ambery elements, just in color, not amber, the actual ingredient. You know, like, you can imagine the color of tobacco. Uh, that envision that color, that green, like, ambery hues with green hues mixed within, that's kind of tobacco color. They're imbued inside of this vetiver ocean. Here we're missing that. So the vetiver doesn't have much to anchor itself to. I mean... It does have the musk, but the musk is so light here. I'm smelling it now. The musk is so light that it doesn't really 
they're not playing a game together. They're, they're standing next to each other, rather. And by standing next to each other, the vetiver kind of tends to, wee, just like flows away, you know. And then the musk is like, oh, where did you go? Uh, oh, there you are. And then the musk runs after it. That's a little bit the game going on here. Here they're hand in hand, thanks to the bonding glue, which are those Oris Rudy, Iris Seed notes, hues, and the tobacco. Um... So if you want more intensity and more character and also a more, well, if you may, fluidity within the whole spectrum of gender, you know, and pronouns, <laughs> that's very popular nowadays to talk about. So, you know, instead of she or he, it's them or they, um, I would say... I would say this one has so much character that it doesn't even care for the them or they, he or she. This one goes even beyond that and, and goes like, I'm not going to go with the flow. I'm just not gonna give myself any pronouns. I am Sycamore, literally. Ankara Noir would fall for the shtick. This one would fall for the fashion of the times. This one would fall for trying really hard to define whatever they they feel inside instead of just living what they feel inside without the need to define anything. And this is a, a very politically incorrect thing I'm saying now, so... But guess what? The times we live in are politically correct, and I ain't. So just take it as you will. I'm deciding to be more sycamore. I just go with my emotions rather than keep getting stuck with words. Funny fact, though, the words are... Uh, the tool I'm using to communicate right now. So I am stuck with words as well, but I also opt for other means of communication, which are visual in this case. And of course, I wish we had Odorama so that you could smell these out together with me. That would be... that would Actually, you know, if we did have Odorama, we could smell these together and we wouldn't really need the words. Could you imagine if we had these microchips inside our brains that could like paint feelings onto boards so whenever so we would all try this one out at the same time and each one of us would portray and paint a picture on a board like the, the the microchips would translate the emotions that this smell in our skin gives us and would translate it into these visual mood boards those visual mood boards would be totally enough to describe this fragrance and we wouldn't need words anymore and that's what i'm heading to uh in this video to end the whole pronoun situation story uh, it, it would be so much better if we didn't need to use words. You know, the whole Tower of Babylon collapsing and, you know, the whole biblical story of, of the separation of the languages because, you know, God wanted to punish the humanity so there would be no more unification. Languages, in fact, are deemed as separation. They do not allow us to unite. So if we could free ourselves from language we would have way more peace in this world and we would be more united and separation would be a thing of the past. And I do believe fragrances, good fragrances, uh, are a, one of the biggest keys to uniting us and allowing us to free ourselves from the burden of words. Uh, because communication doesn't only have to happen through words, you know. And I think if we are to have a future... Uh, as a m mankind, or whatever you want to call us, the biggest parasites this planet has ever seen, uh, then we need to evolve from words, and we have to step it up and find and embrace other ways of communication that will bring us more prosperity and peace. Fragrance is being a shy step towards uh, that discovery of new communication. Perfumes communicate, and this is one of the biggest reasons I use a lot of them throughout the day. The, with every mood shift and change, you, you embrace a different aura around you. Um, these are keys. They, they're not just key, keys to mood descriptions or vibes, but they also open memory patterns inside of us. They can also make you envision stories that you think you've never really lived, but maybe in a past life you have. And so they deliver to you, they, they bring back to you, or they let those memories from inside of you just pop up because how can you remember something that you never really lived? And yet I do when I wear perfumes. A lot of different stories and movies play in my mind that I haven't officially lived, that I don't remember. But if I have a 
memory of them, then of course I must have. Anyway, the darkness of this uh, background was also set up for this. I knew that this video was going to go deep because the second I compare anything to Sycamore, things get really deep. This one just triggers me that way. It has that vetiver in here. Oh, always gets to me, really, and always gets me. So I postponed the Ancre Noir review for a long time, also because how can you really compare anything to Sycamore, the Eau de Toilette? It's just so hard. Um, but after I've worn it for so many years, I've come to a point where I can allow stuff to get close to it without being immediately like, no, don't touch Sycamore. You know what I mean? Um, so let me see how it's developing. This one stays cool on the skin, even as it starts to fade. And quite light on my skin, very light. I don't think that this is going to have a long uh, longevity. Long longevity? I don't think it's going to have a strong longevity. Hours and hours and hours of this one. But all longevity, silage and everything aside, um, you know, if we really quickly look into Sycamore's composition, you know, um, everything's kind of blended together. We have violet, we have tobacco, we have aldehydes, we have sandalwood, of course the vetiver, spicy notes, pink pepper, juniper, and cypress. So we don't have musks officially listed in there. Um, came out two years after this one, 2006-2008. Christopher Sh uh, Sheldrake together with Jacques Polge. So it's a kind of an interesting collaboration. The fact that Chanel admits to two noses behind a fragrance means that, well, two big personalities come together to create something. Jacques was always, the, always since the 80s, the nose behind Chanel uh, perfumes. Uh, but to add another one, you know, together with them, it, I mean, it happened quite, actually, it's not that rare. Uh, you can also check on YouTube videos um, with Sheldrake talking about Chanel fragrances. So there has been a collaborative type of process here, which means, what does this mean? At the end of the day, it ultimately means that um, way more complex formulations and decisions were being made when creating something like this. Ancre Noir feels like... Um, like a cologne, like a water type of refreshing, cooling fragrance that can be reapplied throughout the day, even though the bottle is not practical at all. You can't just take it with you. It's like a square chunk of heavy glass. Um, it's not flat in any way. You know, this is much more practical to, to take with you, even though the sticker is very delicate. You might damage it if you rub it in a bag against something. But so, so here's an idea for you, Chanel, like make travel versions of these that are not so thick in glass. Anyway, um, but this one is definitely meant to be reapplied and much lighter. This one, uh, you don't need to reapply it really. I mean, you can if you're in love with reapplying, if you just want to smell out those top notes all the time. But there's a warmth to this one that can never be uh, found here. And that's also a taste thing, but because it, it, it's lacking the heft, it doesn't stick around for, for long, you know. And at the end of the day, we can't just say, well, it's enough to have cypress and vetiver for two perfumes to smell sim similar. Yeah, okay, they both count a lot on cypress and vetiver. But the way that they interpret them or the way that they tell the story with the cypress and vetiver it is different. They do tell different stories. Yeah, it's like they're echoing each other in some way. Um... And again, I repeat, I know this one was made before this one was even on the table. So how can this one echo this one? Well, to our noses, now it can. And just like our memories that are triggered through the smell of perfumes, we remember all of a sudden things that we th thought we never lived or experienced. Same applies when you smell a fragrance that was formulated before another fragrance. This one can remind us of this one. Why not? It can remind us of anything. You know, everything is possible. But Ancre Noir definitely goes the more subtle uh, root or route and sycamore goes the more mm, subversive if you may route because it does play with traditionally harsh smells 
blended with softer smells, like adding an iris to, to the mix and adding a, adding a sandalwood. Now, sandalwood is a powerful smell, but sandalwood has a softness to it, you know. Sandalwood has something that actually opposes the vetiver. Vetiver is, is, is crude. Sandalwood can be soft and alluring, depending how you blend it. So violets as well. So this is something that uh, it's balancing so many different emotions at the same time. Ancre Noir is more linear. And because it's more linear, it probably also delivers a simpler rendition of, of this story that we're living in, this darkness and uh, these woods we're going through. The bottle promises a bit more than the actual fragrance delivers because the name itself um, doesn't go that deep, you know. If we're going to use Noir, I think uh, Sycamore is more black than Ancre Noir is in its, in its heart. Because black, we have to forget, uh, black is not... Um, I mean, black as color doesn't exist. You know, I mean, you say it's, it's absence of color, but to create black, you need it's, it's either red base or blue bla base. And you could see it if you really illuminate it from the back with light. You could see if a bottle has more red hues or, or blue hues. But um, and white would be all the colors together. So you would think if you mix all the colors together, you get black. No, but technically, if you mix all the colors together, you get white, which is very absurd but that's how it is the logic behind light and color is something that very often eludes us as does elude us the sense of how a perfume <laughs> translated into words can be completely wrongly understood you have to live it out you know i try so hard to talk about them because they inspire me so much but it's at the end of the day i know it's much better to talk through um visuals rather than words and that's again to re go back to Inside Sycamore that's one of the biggest reasons I decided to do uh, the mini series there are no words the first episode begins with a song but then that's it after that it's only sounds and visuals sounds and visuals no more talking for nine episodes straight no more talking just visuals and sounds and that's enough for me to describe a fragrance better than any word ever could and even better than that would be to spray it on your skin and smell it for yourself. And that's that's the only real true way to live a fragrance. So guys, I hope you like this review and actually comparison at this point because they've been together on screen this whole time. Uh, review of Ancre Noir Eau de Toilette and comparison between Ancre Noir Eau de Toilette and Sycamore Eau de Toilette from the Les Exclusives range by Chanel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you like this video. If you have, please do thumb it up. And uh, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Super Deco Ball spelled together, as well as on Patreon. I love you all, and don't forget to never give up on love. I'll see you all very soon. Take care. Bye.